I'm in the middle of one of the most powerful series that I could ever do on this podcast where I'm talking about shining your light. It is such a powerful message that every time I think about it, every time I speak about it, I feel something is just being drawn from out of me. I just feel the passion. I just feel the oomph. I just feel the the need to make sure that you've understood this message and we've been sharing starting the past episode some of the ways that you can shine your light on the face of the earth and i'm going to start this podcast with a very powerful quote this is what ralph waldo emerson and this guy lived years ago i mean decades ago and listen to what he said he said that to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment end quote and i I wonder what this guy would say if he he was alive today to see exactly what kind of world we are living in which is even worse than he thought it was at his time anyway today we are going to continue sharing on one of the ways you can shine your light on the face of the earth stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. And I could say that to do that, to be able to remain yourself, there is only one way to do it. And that is to shine your light. We live in a world that is filled with so much going on in individual lives, in uh, families, in communities in nations, in the whole wide world, we are bombarded on a daily basis with things that are in constant attempt to stifle our light, to dim it, to make sure that it's ultimately put off. And we find that, like I've shared in the previous episodes, we must be deliberate about making our lights to shine. Otherwise, we'll be overcome. Something can happen to you today. Some negative news comes from out of nowhere, from out of the blue. You are on cloud nine. You are rejoicing and everything was happening. And then blindsided from out of the blue, something happens. And if you're not careful, your light starts dimming. Your light starts flickering away into embers and if you're not careful enough, all of a sudden, someone who was shining brighter, someone who was jolly, someone who was happy, someone who was in the middle of their purpose, someone who was seen as if they were going somewhere, all of a sudden, they have dropped out of the map All of a sudden, they are not as happy, as jolly as they were supposed to be or they were meant to be or they used to be. And if that continues, ultimately, their light is turned off. And that is one of the saddest things on the face of the earth. And it is true because, listen, this thing happens to nearly everyone of every age bracket. A child of seven years their light starts dimming 
probably something sinister or something just weird something out of this world happens to them some kind of abuse goes on or maybe i don't know they lose their breadwinner and and their light just starts dimming i mean the light that you've been given to shine on a daily basis is on constant onslaught as if the agenda as if the mandate of things in this world is to put off people's lights one thing or another happens and at the end of the day when you analyze when you sit to analyze you might think that this was meant for this man to fail this was meant for this man to not progress this was meant for this man to just start backpedaling and just regressing and just going back and something sinister by the way i've come to find out is this every time you see a soul regressing maybe a company regressing there is a lot of noise a lot of quote unquote rejoicing going on when someone's light is being put off when someone when someone's light is being blown away by a mighty wind of trouble a mighty wind of crisis a mighty wind of a setback you see some people kind of trying to rejoice why because let me tell you why it is because their lights their lights either have been dimmed or are in the process of being dimmed and they just want to get recognized or they want to be identified or they want the person whose light is being dimmed to be identified with them they want company there's this saying that misery loves company and that's why you see people when someone's light is being dimmed either by some kind of failure either by some kind of personal setback some kind of personal failure some kind of personal thing that they do and they are making their light to start dimming you see people rejoicing you see the news outlet by the way the news is filled with lights being dimmed this one raped that one this one shot that one this one killed that one this one is going to be impeached this one stole this one every time you watch news it is about lights being dimmed lights being put off and people are celebrating people are rejoicing and i wonder why you will sit before your tv on a daily constant basis to watch news to watch lights being dimmed and people have tried to these days to spice up the news and once in a while you see they bring in someone who is making things happen and they interview this person how they did this and how they did that but that is just like a fraction of the news but for the news to sell these days you must start with a headline that is talking about someone else's lights being dimmed an organization falling a country at war someone swindling money someone fighting a scandal someone losing an election this and that and that they constitute the news that's why Ralph Waldo Emerson said that to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying constantly trying to make you something else and actually rejoice in you becoming something else other than the light you were supposed to shine he said if you can shine on if you can overcome that that is the greatest accomplishment and in this podcast i am coming to cement that quote by telling you that you are meant to shine and shining is not a walk in the park my friend you got to double up you've got to roll up your sleeves you got to go against the grain and you've got to maintain the course to maintain the straight and the narrow in order to make your light shine because you'll always find opposition internally opposition internally from lust opposition internally from temptation from selfishness from pride from jealousy from lying from procrastination from laziness all these internal things and even much more unforgiveness and and all these things and they just make your light to be dimmed and then there are these external forces that come this this world is filled with competition this world is filled with lying and jostling and politics and and people wanting to outdo one another and, and people climbing corporate ladders betrayals and, and this this and that and 
things from within and things from outside converging to make sure that your light is not going to shine. Ralph Waldo Emerson for the empty time said to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment you can have on the face of the earth. So we are dealing with ways you can be able to make your light to shine. And I have told you, this is a war, my friend. This is a battle. And the problem is when I mention that it is a battle and it's a war, some people think that it's negative. No, listen. We live in a world of gravity and that's a metaphor. In other words, gravity can help us or gravity can hinder us. Can hinder us from flying until we discover the law of aerodynamics and we circumvent the gravity. But you see, without the gravity, you cannot be able to walk. You'll be floating all over the place. The metaphor of gravity is that we are always going to face some kind of crisis, some kind of opposition. We were not designed necessarily just to coast around in free fall where there is no opposition in the mind, there is no opposition in the body there's no position outside and so on and i'm talking about necessarily opposition i'm talking about you exerting your life and putting your life in such a condition that it's going to be able to shine even when there is no opposition even when there is no opposition in your life you will still have to do some work in order to make your light to shine that's why I'm telling you to shine your light. It's got to be some kind of deliberate effort, some kind of intentional effort, some kind of going forward, making a decision arising, like we said in the previous episode. Arise and shine. Arising is not something that you do without an effort. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. You've got to make sure that there is intentional, there is effort, there is effort expended towards you rising up to shine your light and so in the previous episode we dealt with the first way you can be able to make sure that your light is shining and we said that you must engage your mind at the center of you shining or shrinking there is your mind listen you cannot just remove your mind from the equation and make sure that you're shining there is absolutely no way you're gonna shine without your mind being at play At the very core of it, at the center of your shining is the mind. The good mind, the the mind that is dwelling on the good things and the mind that is also choosing to fight, the mind that is becoming productive, the mind that is becoming conducive, a conducive environment for good thoughts, for thoughts of good, thoughts of goodwill, thoughts of good repose, thoughts thoughts that are noble, thoughts that are of excellence. Otherwise, if your mind is something else chances are that you will start shrinking instead of shining. So make sure one of the biggest components of you shining is thy mind. Thy mind. It is the engine room where your shining is being manufactured. It is where the all of your shine is stored. It is where the all of your shine is coming from. And the brighter it is, your light, then the healthier the mind is and vice versa. So the mind has got to be taken care of fully so that you can be able to shine. And today we're going to talk about one more thing that is absolutely powerful. If you are going to shine, if you're going to make sure that your mind, uh, your light is shining on the face of the earth, number two, if you're ready, you've got to make sure that you've engaged your mouth to train your mouth. Let me tell you something. Ha! Someone say that um, the mouth was given so that you can be able to conquer your mind. Uh, And it is not just the mind that you're conquering here. Like I've told you, some bad report can come and it can dampen your spirits and it can stifle your light and dim your light. And the mind is ruminating on the bad report and the mind is feeding itself on the possibilities of failure the possibilities of extinction, the possibilities of regression, the possibilities of crisis, the possibilities of never making it, the possibilities of shame and embarrassment, 
The mind is mulling over these things and it's creating at the back of it an illusion of it happening. And remember sometimes when these things do happen, the illusion is the greatest enemy because the illusion is a pretender. It masquerades around as the real deal. And normally the illusion is magnified. It's basically like when you're putting an object against the sun. Normally the shadow of the object seems to be bigger than the object itself depending on the shine that has been cast on it from the sun. And that's the same thing with crisis. Sometimes when the crisis comes on you, the mind that you have can illuminate that crisis to an illusion. So once one guy told you he cannot marry you and you think that you were never meant to be married, you make a decision and you walk away and you think you are not beautiful, you think you are not supposed to do this and not supposed to do that. You go for an interview and someone tells you you are pathetic, you can never sing and you can never do this and you can never do that. And the illusion in your mind is magnified to some proportions that are unprecedented and then you make a decision and that decision basically affects the light of your life and so you walk around subservient to the kind of human being that you're supposed to be because of one thing that has been magnified by an illusion that's where your mouth comes in someone said that your mouth was given to you so that it can help you to conquer your mind and to conquer this mind is basically to pull down these illusions these imaginary things these principalities these lofty things these things that exalt themselves against the right thing that is supposed to be things that are pretending things that are masquerading how ah, they are telling you that you have lost you will never make it your mouth is the weapon against it your mouth is the address of your victory let me tell you something i said something some years back and i think it's still true that one of the greatest contributors to a dimmed life is a zipped mouth uh, in other words the things you speak and the light you shine they are connected to thy hip you speak negativity, you preach negativity, you will live a negative, darkened life. But you speak positively and you keep speaking positively. Something happens when the mouth is opened and it speaks something that is of good report. Speaks something that is noble. Spe speaks something that is positive. Speaks something that is encouraging. Speaks something that is illuminating. Speaks something that is futuristic and big and blessed and noble but when the mouth does the opposite speaks of how bad things are how bad the economy is how bad and disadvantaged my family is how i don't have this paper and i don't have that paper how i was never given this privilege to do this and given that privilege to do that what you're doing my friend you are dimming your lights with your own mouth so that's why I'm saying one of the ways you can make your light to shine on the face of the earth is to use and train the mouth. It is not just opening the mouth and saying anything. Let me tell you, Jesus said that from the abundance of their heart, in other words, you meditate on some things and you don't just, just speak. There is a foundation of your speech. And the foundation of your speech is normally inside of your meditation. Inside of your heart. It has formed some kind of stronghold. It has formed some kind of foundation. Some kind of platform from which you are speaking. You are not just speaking something hollow. Picture someone who is standing at a platform on a stadium. And they want to jump into this Olympic size swimming pool that is the same thing with you and your speech your speech is coming from that platform and so when you launch out and speak when you open your mouth and speak whatever you are releasing is coming from the deep inside of you so the question will be this what is the content that is inside of your heart that is what informs why do you speak what do you ruminate on that's why i was telling you earlier on that it's a weird thing for you to sit before the tv every single day faithfully nine o'clock news watching lights being dimmed in a nation watching lights being dimmed in someone else's life in a community watching this murder watching this failure watching this and watching that 
it is what is going to form the foundation from which you are going to speak. That's why you and I must have watchmen. This, this guy who said, set a guard over my mouth. He was praying. He said, God, set a guard over my mouth. That's why that mouth has got to be trained. We Words are powerful. You don't just unleash words. Speak against this. Speak against that. Just uh, And in your life, you're just speaking things that are planting negativity, planting failure, planting fear, and feeding these illusions to unproportional heights. Your light is not going to shine if your mouth is not. Train. The relationship between your mouth and the mind can be very complicated. On one hand, there is a fight. You must fight. And then on the other hand, there is collaboration. They've got to collaborate. Sometimes the mind goes on a limb and you've got to shut it up. And sometimes I've caught myself very many times telling myself, shut up, Lawrence. And that's just, I'm telling my mind to shut up. Don't think you are a failure. Shut up. Don't think you'll never make it. You'll never get that contact. Shut up. (laughs) And so I fight my mind. And then sometimes my mind and my mouth, they collaborate. I find myself saying, yes. Because I'm thinking of how the future, how beautiful the future is. My mind is ruminating on my contact, my company, my business, my employees, my travels, my family, my harmony. And I'm like, yes, in my mind, I'm speaking, I'm acknowledging, I'm commenting, I'm fermenting it. And I'm saying, yes. So there's this collaboration between my mouth and my mind. And it's on a tangent. It's on a daily basis. There's got to be a fight. Your mouth has got to fight your mind. Remember this guy who said, I don't know who this was, that you are given your mouth so that you can conquer your mind. Sometimes you've got to conquer that mind and tell it to shut up and tell it to think aright and tell it to stop ruminating on those thoughts and tell it to shut up and just get out that, they get that thought out of my, out of my system. I don't want to think about that. All right. And <laughs> sometimes you just collaborate. The thing is that it doesn't matter whether the point of collaboration is negative or positive. The thing that does is when the mind and the mouth are in collaboration, believe me, the percentage of success is such a great possibility. Whatever the mind and the mouth agree on, (laughs) the rest of the life just follows. And that's why there's this guy called Woodrow Wilson. Look at this. This man gave us a quote and then some. Carter Goodwin Woodson. He said, if you can control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his action. When you determine that a man, what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you make a man feel that he is inferior, you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status for he will seek it himself. If you make a man think that he is is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him back the door. He will go there without being told and if there is no door, his very nature will demand one. His very nature will demand a door. That means the same thing I'm telling you today, that if your mind and your mouth are in agreement, the rest of your life and the rest of your shining follows suit. So your mouth is... You see, last episode, yesterday, we talked about your mind and we dealt with it amicably. But I'm saying today that the mind is simply the cove. The mind is simply the platform and the mouth speaks attached to the mind and to the heart. So when these two guys are in agreement, when they agree that you are stupid, even if you ain't stupid, your shine is going to be dimmed and you will become stupid. When the two, your mind and your mouth agree that you are not marriage material, even if you are 
you will not get married. When these two agree that you are a failure, even if you ain't a failure, the mouth has said you are a failure because it's agreeing with the mind that you are a failure. I'm telling you, we can fly you even to the best Harvard tutor and we can bring in Tony Robbins multiplied by three. We can bring in Les Brown and we can bring in every one of these big shots. But the moment your mind and your mouth have made an agreement, that's just about it. And if they were to help you, let me tell you where they will help you from. They will help you from changing your mind, changing what you think about, and changing what you're speaking about. What are you speaking about your life this morning? It is directly proportional or is going to influence the kind of shining that you're going to do in this life. Whatever it is you agree on your mind, that follows your life. That explains your life. That makes your life take a course. Your life is not taking a course on its own. It is taking a course depending on the agreement of the mouth and the agreement of the mind. Whatever the mind and the mouth agree on, the rest of life, sadly or beautifully, follows. So what have you been saying? What have you been saying loosely? What have you been saying deliberately? What have you been saying in reaction to a situation? Have you been quick to say some things without thinking? Have you been quick to react and respond without having this cove of your mind sorted out so that whatever it is you've been thinking about, see, when even failure beckons, what are you saying? Are you agreeing without assessment? What are you commenting about if i look at your timeline what are you sharing on social media what are you saying for the most part what you say reflects how your light is going to shine or not so what are you saying and what are you thinking what are your thoughts and your speech what is their point of agreement that is going to determine the kind of light that you're going to shine or not so you're supposed to use this mouth Huh? Someone say that our answer is right under our nose. And I think that's Joyce Meyer. Right under your nose, you can be able to speak some things into your life. Use your mouth to speak out against any notion of shrinking. Any notion of shrinking, even when it feels like, yes, I am shrinking. Remember the story of the guy who was being forced to sit down either by bullies or by his dad. I can't remember who, but this guy was being forced to sit down and hold him and they held him down by force and they sat him down. And they thought they'd conquered the man. And the man blurted out saying, I might might be sitting down on the outside, but in the inside, I'm standing up. That's how you shine. You speak against any notion, any notion of shrinking. They said you will not make it inside of your heart. You know you are a child of God. You are supposed to arise and shine and you will shine regardless of what they say. You will shine eventually. They might not make you shine today, but you will eventually overcome and you will eventually shine. So you are supposed to make sure that you are using that mouth to fight any notion of shrinking. And I can tell you this. One of the things that we normally do is when situations come, we remain silent. We keep quiet. We let the mind run on its engine of negativity, on its engine of illusions, creating for us illusions. And we are telling ourselves that this is a reality. These are the brutal facts. Yeah, they could be the brutal facts, but they are not the truth. The mind is making illusions out of them. And so the mouth comes in and tells the mind to shut up. Shut up. I'm going to make it. Shut up, I'm the head and I'm not the tail. Shut up, I'm ahead and I'm not behind. Shut up, I'll make it. I'm blessed and I'm not cursed. Shut up, I am a child of the living God. I'm not a failure. Shut up. It is a deliberate fight, especially when a situation arises. 
you keep speaking you keep saying so you keep saying the things that god said about you god said you're the first so you are the first god said you're blessed so you are blessed god said you are mighty in the land so you are mighty in the land even when the situation is speaking a different thing your mouth says something else your mouth kind of just refuses to shrink refuses to shrink refuses that you are a failure refuses that you will not make it refuses that you are regressing refuses that this is your destiny because it is not your destiny refuses that you are going to make your life to be dimmed and to be zipped out forever no refuses that you and speaks out and says that you will shine you will shine your light because you are the light of the world so you will shine you are born to shine so when sickness comes you will tell the sickness i will still shine my light you are born to shine so when failure and the examination comes you will tell that failure that i was born to shine and you are not my undertaker my light will still shine without the degree my light will still shine without passing my form for examinations my light will still shine even after i've lost my parents my light will still shine even after i've gone through that and that my light i am still breathing and as long as i am breathing i'm going to say this the my light will shine that's the purpose of your mouth <laughs> the purpose of your mouth is not primarily to be eating and feeding no it is to speak the shine <laughs> speak until you start feeling the inspiration coming up speak like a preacher in the zone assume you're a td jakes and preach yourself a revival look at yourself in the mirror they said you have a fat nose say that fat nose or thin nose or no nose my light is going to shine speak against the negativity in your mind speak in and interrupt those thoughts don't let those thoughts of failure thoughts of regression thoughts of backwardness ever come into your mind even when the hope that you had seemingly is is divided and taken away and scattered that is not your destiny and that is not your end you are still going to face even it looks stupid to face yourself in the mirror and say regardless nevertheless i will shine i will shine i'm not dead i'm still alive i'm still walking i'm still healthy i'm still breathing in and i'm still breathing out and as long as i'm breathing in and out i am making a decree and i'm declaring i'm all shine the mouth is not just for eating The mouth is not just for eating it is for speaking and not just for speaking loosely it is for prophesying and I'm not talking about religion I'm talking about forth telling your destiny forth telling your direction of life forth telling your blessing forth telling your prosperity forth telling your value forth telling your impact use your mouth to speak out loud proclaiming where you are going you desired end what is your desired end Every one of us has a desired end, something beautiful, something prosperous, something comfortable, something of value, something of impact into the face of the earth. So say so even against right now the situation you might be the brokest guy in the village. Huh? Whose family is the least in the community? But you can open that mouth and you can say so that you desire an end and this is how the end looks like and you keep saying you keep speaking you keep shining the more you open your mouth and keep speaking especially to the man in the mirror that's the more your light keeps shining and shining and shining that's the more you're keeping putting some all in your light and when the match is struck and the light is put on how great a light how great a brilliance how great a magnificence how great a glory the shine is going to come because of your mouth look at yourself in the mirror and speak and prophesy about your today and your tomorrow and your future don't agree with the situation today that says you're broke and so you're going to be broke and listen this is not just utopia there are many other things that you can be able to do but this is part of the package I know it looks like it's an easy thing to do it is because every one of us has a mouth every one of us can be able to speak but that's not just it because I'm going to share I'm going to add other things to this but this is crucial this is critical into the equation you've got to speak you've got to say so 
in your mouth. I mean, you, using your mouth. And I've told you one of the greatest contributors of a dimmed life. A life that is not shining is a zipped mouth. Mouth that is shut. Mouth that is just nodding and accepting the things that have been dealt with. Someone say that you do life with the cards that you've been dealt with. That doesn't mean that you just keep quiet and keep silent. You can still speak. You can still say these things. There is a man some decades ago who against all the odds of his life. I mean, even at that moment in time, if you looked at what he was saying, you would laugh at the man. What are you talking about? This is not going to happen. It's ever, never going to happen in a million years. But this man rose up against the very nature of what he wanted. The situation at that moment in time, the very situation he wanted was a dream. It was some dream for the distant future. And he rose up and he said, with his mouth, he decreed and declared, he said, I have a dream today. The one day my child, my sons and daughters will walk around, every black man and every white man, they walk together, being judged not by the color of their skin, but by, by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And he spoke about it. He said, ah, I am not concerned about longevity. Longevity is important. It has its place. But I just want to do God's will. But I can tell you, I have seen the promised land. And I promise you, we are going to get there one day. And then he said, I might not even get there with you. But I promise you, we will get there. That was a mouth exercising against the odds that he was facing at that moment in time if you looked at Martin Luther King Jr. and asked him, dude, what are you talking about? It was an impossibility. They were being burnt. They were being segregated left, right and center. The government was even on it. And rising up with your mouth and saying something to the contrary is weird. That's why I'm inviting you to say it. You might be in a situation today that's spelling poverty. It's spelling failure. It's spelling darkness. That's the purpose of your mouth. Prepare your mind and prepare your mouth and start speaking towards your dream. Towards where you're walking, you will own a company. You will fly from one place to another. You will be a blessing in the face of the earth. Speak these things. You are a man of value. You are a woman of value. You are a man of substance. You are a woman of substance. Speak unto it. Even when right now it is the exact opposite. Probably you are you are dimmed. Your lights are dimmed in some kind of personal failure at the moment. That should not be your undertaker. Use the mouth. That thing below your nose. Open it wide and speak into your life and say where you are going, what you will do, how you will be perceived, the changes that you will make, the impact that you create, the influence that you bring. Speak into it even when it feels like it's an impossibility. That's the purpose of your mouth. And then another man, um, uh, again, I mean, even the technology itself that he was talking about had not been invented. He said, we must go to the moon. We must go to the moon. We must go to the moon. This was in 1950 something. Even the technology, he didn't know the kind of technology that was going to be used to be able to send a man to the moon and bring him back. But this man opened his mouth huh? and he dreamed. This man opened his mouth as if he was a mechanic, as if he was a scientist, and he dreamt, and he told a nation in 1950-something, he told a whole nation that was listening, we are going to go to the moon, we must make an endeavor to go to the moon. He opened his mouth against the odds that were in that place. Ten years later, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, and he said a giant sleep. One small step for man, a giant leap for the humankind. The dream became a reality because somebody opened his mouth. Come to think of it, if we never heard the moon speech from J.F. Kennedy, if we never heard that moon speech, do you think someone would have gone on to the moon in that particular year? I honestly do not think so. The mouth... Where the mouth goes, with the words that the mouth has spoken, life 
always is going to follow. I shudder to think of what you will be saying about your life, especially in the negative. I'm telling you, it is going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Years back, there is a man that I'm so intimate with. He said these things. And at the time he was saying that thing, he was being forced out of college because he couldn't be able to continue paying for school fees to go to a graduate diploma. And he was being forced not just out of college, but out of the city. Not just out of the city, but out of that capital city of this country to go back to his village because there was no other option and he was distraught and he was crestfallen and he did not know what his future held and he said one thing to his friend who was a prayer partner and he told her listen to me I don't know how the future holds but I know one thing I was meant for greater things he opened his mouth and he started speaking about his future and the moment he was speaking those things it was the weirdest thing ever how can you be saying this thing you are aggressive into the village. You are going to oblivion. How can you be saying that you are meant for greater things? He said, I'm a world changer. Years down the line, that man got out of the village. And you're listening to his podcast today being broadcast in 62 countries in the face of the world and I have just begun. I used my mouth against my circumstances and I I can tell you I am talking about my light shining, your light shining today because on that particular day I opened my mouth against the odds that I was facing and I prophesied and I said I'm a man, I'm a man who is supposed to change the world. I am meant for greater things and not for this. One of the greatest contributors of a life that is dimmed is a zip mouth. And if you're going to shine your light on the face of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, you must be a man or a woman who is going to use his mouth appropriately and foretell and speak actively, proactively, probably even on a daily basis against the odds that you're facing. You have a dream and you have a future. So, one of the ways that you're going to make your light to shine, number one, we talked about it in the past episode, you must engage your mind. And number two, even as a close, train your mouth to speak to where your future is going. We're going to continue with these thoughts in the next episode. For now, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.